welcome to episode 25. Uh, this week's video is about uh, moving the steer wheel and get the seats finished uh, last episode. So this episode is all about uh, moving the steering wheel and up moving it over, down, and up. I moved up, in, and over to get it to line up with the seats. And uh, also get the headlights installed. I don't know if you can see the headlights. I finally get the headlight retainer thing uh, figured out. And uh, what else did I get there? I also get all the lights. Got all the marker lights installed, I'm wiring them now. And uh, I think that's about it in this episode. So, welcome to episode 25. So, I think I have an idea on how to fix the parking brake. I'm just going to move the switch down and in and get it away from this stupid motor. I think that'd be the easiest thing. Just move it off the pedal box. Just basically add a new tab. With a new hole and a new tab and just move it down an inch two inches whatever still won't see it problem solved um but it's just a little too close i just put the steering wheel back on it feels a little close but i did shorten i'm pretty sure i'll have to go back and look at my old videos see where it was before Obviously the wing mirror thing was here. I'm pretty sure I shortened it like two or three or four inches. Obviously these seats are maybe different than the bench seat. They may be thicker. But uh, I'm thinking what I do. Since I have to move the steering wheel over half an inch, I can move that brake pedal switch. I can move it back at least an inch and a half. I just took a tube. I can push it back an inch and a half and over half an inch. I think I'm going to go down about an inch and a half. And I'm going to, because i got a lot of room down. That's not too much work. If I'm going to move it, I might as well move it. You know, let's move it, move it. I think my steering column shaft will work. So I'm only going over half an inch. In an inch and a half. And down. So I think my boot will survive that much. I hope. But yeah. I don't know. It just seems like it's... I don't know. It seems like it's close. Yeah, you can see from here, the steering wheel needs to go over like half an inch. Half an inch. I don't know if I show this. I've only got one headlight in. I actually got two headlights in now. And uh, I've got a turn signal in. I cleaned that one pretty good. I'm actually cleaning the other one better. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I got the bumper on. I tried to take that dent out the best I could. I haven't cleaned the bumper yet. Second time I've ever put this bumper on. It came separate from the truck. I threw it out once. Then I took it off and never put it on. So now it's on for the second time. I just put the emblem on. I only have one. I need another one. So, uh... These lights are not on yet. The insides are missing. They're just on for looks. But yeah, it's starting to look like something. Something. So I noticed I got one trim ring. That's a weird one. It doesn't have slots. It's not Nissan, I don't think. I found out they still make these brand new. Nissan does, which is pretty cool. But uh, they're almost all broken. I think two of them are not broken. I think I have five that are good. Five total. Plus the non-Nissan one. But I drilled a hole in one of them and put a rivet in there. I think that's that one. So the river repair did work. That one I think was actually still good. Amazing ring. So these are the screws I'm going to use for just about everything. Five by eight, metric, stainless, where does it say? It says somewhere, button head, flat head. Oh, maybe this is the flat one. But I like the button head style. Oh, here we go. Oh, pan head. Oh, that's Phillips. Never mind. That's what the hell is that for? Oh, those are four millimeter. Those are for the white. Those are for the headlights. I think I found the best fix to fix these headlight retainers. A bunch of mine are broken and they're spot welded. They're stainless steel. It's taking me forever to try to figure out a way to fix these stupid things. Even though I think they sell them brand new still. 
the five tens I think they're the same. But I just took an eighth inch drill bit, which is three millimeters, so I'm about a three millimeter rivet. And I've already done one of them and it worked. So the trick to drilling a hole in these is uh you just put it over a piece of wood. It was so much easier. And there you go. Now uh, fixed. These are like 30 bucks or two, I think, brand new. But this will work. Really impressed with how uh this acid did on clean these things. I don't know if I wire wheel this or not, maybe I did. But mostly it's just uh phosphoric acid. Lots and lots of coats and time. I didn't wire wheel the inside, it's too hard to get in there. But I got a crazy idea that I may do to fix these. Instead of putting back in the wire and the spring and the little rubber and an old bulb, well I've already bought LED bulbs for them, but instead I had a crazy idea. I'm just taking these trailer lights, they're three quarter inch full. I got these on my trailer, they're like five bucks. They're completely solid state sealed. They actually fit perfectly. They actually fit perfectly in here. I just measured this. This is about the exact same size. So I could cut out this old technology, the spring and cup and bulb, and just have a nice three quarter inch hole and pop these in here and I'll put the lens on top. They make these in clear and uh, red and yellow. I don't think I've ever bought a clear one. Maybe I did actually, because you can use them like dome lights or whatever. Uh, so I'm trying to think if I want to keep it all traditional and use. LED bulbs in these. I've only had like one rubber kind of get kind of gummy and uh, I got out most of the corroded bulbs. Pretty nasty. Here's the back side. Let's see this part dry already. Look at that. That's the front turns. That's just a little spray paint chrome. And I can't convert that one with the lights because that's a turn and a park I think. Oh that's just a turn signal isn't it? Yeah I guess I could convert that. Yeah, that's just a turn signal. I could actually do that one. These are kind of a come along. I just painted this one five minutes ago. I think it's the only one I haven't done yet. But the only way to get these bulbs out, some of them still work. Just got to break the bulb and take numerous powers and rip out the base. And it's going to be a chore to clean out all that corrosion. I'm just afraid I'm going to be. Trying to get a good contact, it all relies on the spring. I think this is the one I... This rubber's all gooey. I think this will be a perfect candidate to convert to LED. Because, uh... Hello. So I've just got the wiper arm finished, installed. Oh, now it's hooked up to the motor. got the motor installed for the first time ever. Uh, I had to drill it out, six millimeter. But, um... Just put these little nuts on in my aluminum painted white covers. I don't know, it's okay. I probably should paint them black, but I figured since that's aluminum, that's rubber, why paint them black? So I could have painted like a metal finish, but we'll see how I like it. The rest is gonna be stainless. Let's see how I like it. But yeah, they just uh, snug up to make that seal, even though that rubber is like rock hard. Hopefully that'll seal. But yeah, I finally got the wipers on. And I think I never filmed it, but I had to re-solder these wires. Somebody had modified it to put intermittent wipers on back in the 70s. So I had to cut all the wires and put it all back to stock. So I haven't tested it yet. Hopefully this thing works. If not, it's going to be a challenge trying to find another one. Or maybe I can convert to a hard body one or something. I don't know. I don't even know how this thing works. I think it actually goes lefty righty, lefty right. I don't think it goes continuous like new cars do. I don't know. We'll test this thing soon. The only thing I understand is I guess there's a rubber boot on here to keep the outside out. And I don't know if I have that rubber. I think I did see some weird rubber boot somewhere in a box. But I didn't like how this thing bolts on and there's this huge gap. Let's see if I turn the light on. I'm not crazy about that at all. It's gonna be hard to seal that. So I'm thinking about doing is moving that motor in the inside. Which if I put it right here, that's my glove box. So I'd have to put it over here, or over here. So I think it'd be doable to relocate or maybe even move it over here or something. 
anybody's ever done it, let me know. But I really want to have a glove box. And I don't like this big hole, so I'm really thinking about moving that inside. And then I could use that space for fuse boxes and stuff. So, at least I got these all bolted on. I'm really happy with the wipers. First time they're, when I bought the truck, all the bolts were broken or missing, so it's the first time it's ever been officially all the bolts on. Now that I've got the seat in here, and the seat's actually really low, but I think the steering wheel still needs to go a little more forward. So instead of cutting this, or before I cut this again, which was a lot of work, because yeah, I got the leaf connected to the 70s column, I think before I cut that, I could easily move this computer back almost two inches. It needs to go over half an inch to get the wheel straight with the wheel, right? So if I cut this tab off, uh, I can move it over half an inch, and instead of welding it on half an inch over, I might as well push it all the way back. Uh, I've got an inch and a half clearance right now. I could go back probably two inches and reinforce this bar to the brake pedal assembly because the brake pedal assembly is weak now that I've cut the support. They used to go up to here. So I'll actually fix the brake pedal assembly and get this in a better position, get it back and over. And, uh, and then I'll fix my brake light switch. I'm just going to move the switch down on the pedal because right now the computer, I mean the computer, this motor is pretty much touching the brake pedal switch. So that's not good. So I'll fix all those things by just moving this mount over a half back to. That should be pretty straightforward. And then obviously I'll have to redesign this mount and I'll add a new mount over there to the brake pedal. And then hopefully I'll be finally done with the steering column. Oh, it's a lot of work. You see what I'm talking about? This computer can go back. She can go back like five inches, right? There's nothing there. Just the motor is hitting the brake pedal. And I can definitely clearance that. I'm going to get this camera in there because I can't see. But I think there's room in there. I'll look at it from the other side. There you go. Just put a rivet in there. I smashed it afterwards. And that's fixed. I hope you'll ever see that. Okay, here's the pedal assembly. Here's my idea. I can take about an inch out of this. I don't need all this steel. And this is in the way of the electric steering. And so is this. So I'm gonna, I think I'm going to cut this straight off. And then I'm just going to weld this back on. Like an inch or two lower. And then I'll have to move this little tab. My brand new little bumper. I just bought. And I just painted these pedals. Oh. Now I gotta ruin my paint job. I need to move that thing down the same distance. This pedal, clutch pedal, no modification. So let's cut this first and then we'll weld it back together. Okay, so the first thing I did is I hopped. I labeled where the clutch pedals are. Just put in a little jig here and added a piece of brace across the top. Because I need that to be stronger anyways. Just kind of flopping around. So I removed the factory stuff a while ago. So now I want to cut off. I'm going to cut this whole front off. This will give me room for the motor that's an inch and a half away right now. The power steering motor can come back. I think like two inches. And uh, it'll still be right there. And then uh, I'm going to move this thing down. I don't know, like an inch, two inches, whatever it takes, maybe three inches. So I think I just cut that straight off, cut these off, and put a piece of steel across. Obviously I put the pedal back on because there's a hole here I need to get to. Put a piece across here diagonally. Yes, and now, now I got that well, now we cut this off. All right, you're next, buddy. I'm gonna cut that off. So I cut off the front. I don't know if I showed that already. And I cut off those big ears, so it used to be kind of like here. So this is going to go down here with a new bar across. Got the new tab welded on. It's hard to put the truck because I got the brake booster still in there with the studs coming through. And I got these studs going that way, going the opposite directions. And this stupid little factory tab that prevents this tab from getting in the way. 
And that one should be easy to install. Hopefully. It's not fighting me. It's a little hot. I'm gonna burn myself on this thing. Just play with it. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm not gonna get burnt. Uh, get that bolted back on, and I can put the column back in and cut these off. Okay, so I took the steering brace thing off for the first time since I've added the middle. That was pretty good. Except for I probably should put the bolts on the uh, on the other side. Oh well, I got it out. So now I've cut off the old mounting tab. And I can actually push this thing back almost two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to push it back two inches. So I made new brackets. Twice. These old ones were like this. Now they will be more like this. And I can almost reuse these except for now. Because before it was in front of the bump. Now it's going to be on the bump. I need bigger brackets. So I made new ones. Screw those up. I made them again. Oh shoot, I didn't even test them yet. See if they even work. So I think they go. Is that even thick enough? Oh, I hope so. Oh man, that's yeah, maybe not. Shoot, I'm gonna have to put it. That's not thick enough, is it? Oh, should I use thicker steel? Three times I made brackets for this thing. Uh, let's see, maybe I can make them work. The idea is to hold this up, something like that, and weld them on. It's going to be pretty close to that nut. Oh man, that nut's close. I almost need to notch the two, which I hate to do. Or cut the head off. I guess I could grind the head off. So I guess I should weld that to that, and then maybe grind it down. Uh, so much work. Okay. I just removed the uh, reverse light. I'm sorry, the uh, license plate light is actually held in by screws, and uh, it was pretty rusty on the threads. And uh, I was able to get them out with a well small screwdriver. I'm so lucky that they didn't break. They were a little hard to get past the bad threads, but uh, I don't know how that license plate's going to work. It's kind of uh, tinted, but I got it off, and now I've got a clean it up and put a bulb in there okay so I just took the license plate light apart this is a four millimeter and those are five millimeter and the bulb is an 89 7.5 watt 12 volt looks like uh, who cares if bad I got an LED to replace it so this thing actually came apart pretty easily I'm so surprised very nasty but I think I'm gonna paint this chrome in the inside of this. Oh, it's actually got the part in here. Looks like it's that same Everwing or whatever. Everwing. I'm going to clean this up, put an LED bulb in here, and put this back on the truck, and I'm going to replace these screws with bolts, bolt heads, because they were tricky to get out. I had to use a right angle screwdriver. And luckily, they didn't break. So I just put the, uh, just relocated the brake light switch on the pedal. I moved it from here down to here. That was pretty easy. And I just put the motor, the power steering back in. And this is where I want to put it, where I got some room. So now, just cut some steel. I'm going to run some steel from here to here. And uh, now I got to take this thing out and shorten that thing like two and a half inches. I've moved it way back. It fits really nice. And all I had to do was cut this, cut that corner off, and also relocate the wiring. All this wiring was rubbing on the brake pedal, and it didn't need to because it was going all the way around the unit come back. So I just unzip tied it, and I can just go straight to the fuse box and not get in the way of the brake pedal. So that was a win win. Okay, so I've uh, put the pedal box on the table. Popped up the pedals where they're supposed to be. I'm putting a brace to relocate the switch down. I think I'm going to tack this side and this one. I'm going to put it back in the truck again. Retest everything, make sure everything's right. Because there's some adjustment in the pedal and stuff, but 
I'm just kind of going off my sharpie marks of what this where this was. Hopefully I got in the right place. And yeah, there should have room now for this switch to clear the power brakes. Power steering, sorry, power steering. So here's the completed pedal box assembly. I reinforced the top, relocated the brake light switch, and the clutch pedal stopper. And then I also uh, painted the inside of here. This is my clutch pedal bolts, eight millimeter. We painted the clutch pedal and brake pedal flat black. So what I noticed something interesting when I unbolted this from the firewall. There. Right, here's the completed pedal box. Uh, I'm glad I took this thing out because uh, there's some, I think it was bare metal in here. And it was kind of rusty and the firewall was all rusty. So I just treated that and painted that. Added a piece of steel. I think I'm going to bolt this to the top later. But I relocated the brake light switch so the power steering doesn't. Power steering, yeah, power steering motor doesn't get in the way because it's kind of like right here. And uh, let's put a little 11 gauge braces down. I think it'll be strong enough to hold the switch. We'll see. And I threw another piece of coat, coat of paint, flat paint on these, my brake pedals. And these are nicely made, little bronze, little bearings. Uh, so yeah, I just got to throw this back in. Again, I don't know how many times I've taken this pedal box out. At least 10 times. <laughs> so here's the latest. I, I don't know, you can't see it now. I added some braces to the back from the new tabs. Actually, they're thicker. But I painted the firewall, actually did some acid treatment. Just sprayed a little acid on there and that rust just washed away in like 30 minutes. And I treated it. It's all gonna get coated one day, but just bare metal behind there. And that's just a bolt on. That wasn't even like a rivet on. There's no paint underneath that thing. So I gotta get paint on everything in this thing, treat it. So yeah, now we just gotta uh, put it back together again. And then I'm still gonna modify this, I think. I'm gonna raise this up like an inch, maybe even two inches. Just because I can, and make it more comfortable in here. Okay, this is pretty interesting. So I was just cleaning up this uh, wheel lock, uh, door lock. And I uh, cleaned up one of them, you know, got rid of all the overspray somebody got on there. And I just put some uh, oil in there, just sprayed it with, you know, PB Blaster, filled it up. It works perfectly, but I just figured I'd lube it up now before I put it back in. But I didn't know which one was which, and they are different. I noticed on the back, they got a BR and a BL. So I'm going to assume L is left and R is right. And I think B is the vehicle code. So I don't know if you know this, but like every Nissan uses a letter for each vehicle like each model so maybe B is like 520 because I know uh, like the 720s were a W and the second five digits if you have a letter in it that's like the series like G is a hard body A was like a Sentra uh, and sometimes parts you know are used in different vehicles but it was designed for a B so maybe it's like a 510 who knows but I'm gonna assume L is left R is right and B is the vehicle code so the last five digits also, these are just filled in by a little metal clip. It was a little bit rusty, so I de-rusted it for a while, and then I just painted it. A couple of coats of black cheap paint. Just to prevent it from rusting again. Okay. So there's two holes on the lever that does the door handle. The top one, the shorter one, is for the wheel the cylinder. So the trick is, I figured out I just did the other side. This can only go in 101, it's keyed. So that's good. But uh, you have to put in the cylinder first and then this second. And so this goes in one end and this pops in here. It just pops out if you need to take it out. And then uh, so all you do is put in this clip. I don't know if I can film this. Let's try it. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, so put this in from the outside. Like I said, it's key. It only goes one way. That's good. You don't need any tools. Get the clip on there. Now I just put in this. So you gotta put the rounded one in the wheel cylinder or the lock cylinder. I already tested this side and it worked so.
There we go. I tried to do it. There you go. Now it's in. There you go. Pops that. Oh shit, I was supposed to pop that in there. Oh, I gotta take that back out. I didn't pop it in the little thingy, right? Okay, the bottom one's in. The bottom one's in. minutes later <laughs> I got in let's test it let's get the key that's your worst thing to do But again, so open up. Locked. You're just gonna have to trust me. So I officially got, oh yeah, it's actually farther than I thought. I just moved the steering wheel, <coughs> excuse me, column back two inches, moved the mounts. This is a lot better. But then uh, I had to move the motor back half an inch because it was kind of hitting the pedal. So I had to redo this bracket. Then the steering column was kind of crooked, so I had to make the hole in the firewall bigger to get it to go over more of an angle. Then I had to shorten that steering column like an inch and a half so it's officially back an inch and a half and it feels a lot better also I raised it up and I pushed it over so it went back an inch and a half over half an inch and up I don't know like two inches or something so it feels really good um, it's interesting this is where the factory steering wheel is this is where the center of the truck is and then this is where I compromised because I couldn't get the seat over more so I kind of put the seat in between the factory location, the official center of the truck. And there you can see the center of the truck is between these two bolts. That's where the old steering column was. So now i got the seat and the steering wheel straight. I've got it farther back. I may even move it more back later. But uh, now I can get back to finishing the seats. Now that I've got the steering wheel and the seats lined up. Here's what it looks like. Look at it. Well, compared to the old videos of where it originally was I need to put that core glass back in I think it's still closer than the factory I can't remember I need to look back at the old videos at least uh, is that center of the seat? yeah it is oh that was a lot of work <clears throat> I had to shorten this stupid column cut it all apart don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below if you want to see more Truck's coming along. One coat of white paint. No clear coat yet.